Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out once again here to the luncheon. Uh, our Missouri Southern trip, a uh, pretty lengthy trip for us. We made it a two-day trip going down, stopped in Kansas City, uh, and then finished up our trip on Friday to head into Joplin, Missouri. Uh, as, as Tom spoke about it, we did some really good things offensively. Uh, our offensive line uh, played their best football game. That was a very formidable defensive front. Uh, that's a very good, very good conference, if not the best Division II conference uh, in college football. And I thought I was very, very pleased with our play up front. They're able to handle a defensive line that's very talented. They have an NFL prospect at one of their defensive line positions. We, we forced them to get in and out of a couple different fronts that they didn't want to get to. And they did a cons consistent job allowing us to run the football and keep the pocket and throw it. We were showing some signs offensively that are very positive. On the flip side of that, we keep doing the same thing, and that's turning the football over. And there's some pretty telling stats in, in both college and, and pro football. Uh, once you turn the football over, you're going to lose. It's really that simple. And, and the game of football is about having the football and keeping the football. So we've got to find a way to get away from turning the football over at any time, and especially early in the football game. Uh, there's too many times I'm looking up at that scoreboard in the middle of the first quarter, and it says 14 to nothing, and it's, it's due to a turnover and a big play on defense. Uh, defensively, they presented a unique challenge to us. They're a triple option football team, the only one on our schedule. And, and in the football world, when you see that unique of an offense, it's always a challenge. You cannot imitate the speed of that offense. They had a couple playmakers that got to us in space. I thought our kids adjusted well at times. Uh, we handled their athleticism pretty well, but we cannot give up the big runs, and, and we continue to tackle at a level that's not good enough for us. So we continue to work on those things. Uh, we made some plays early. We got a couple turnovers on the defensive side early that I thought uh, gave us a chance to stay in it. But we've got to eliminate the mistakes uh, you know, on the offensive side with the turnovers, and we've got to force people to drive the length of the field if we want to continue to, to grow and develop. But I thought we took a major step forward as a program. We played a legitimate uh, a Division II program that's fully funded in, in, in a very tough conference, and our kids certainly competed every down, and I felt good about where we're at as far as a competitive standpoint and, and, who, that, and who that team we were going against was. Uh, we finally had a couple things go right for us, and I think Brad's got a cut right here. I thought we did some unique things on special teams that uh, we want to take advantage of. We, we, we saw a weakness in their alignment on their kickoff return team. Twice they put it on the ground. Uh, here we just did a little pooch kick to the right. We actually end up in the end zone with it. They put the ball on the one-yard line. But it was good for us to, uh, to create some, me some momentum in the special teams game. We blocked two extra points. Austin Adam, one of our defensive ends, did that. So we had some, some positive strides on that. Uh, we need to continue to work on our field goal game. We left some points out in the game and had one blocked on our end. So we're going to look at making some changes this week on a couple different things and, and cleaning up that phase of the football game. Any questions on the Missouri Southern football game or anything on that trip? And then I'll address our, our upcoming game against Presentation College. Coach Collins, when you do a two-day trip, uh, how do you keep it? Because that's a long ways down there. How do you keep it interesting? How do you keep your kids in tune with what you're trying to do? Yeah. You know, for us, it's it, what works out real well is we practice Thursday mornings. We've done that all season. So Tuesday and Wednesdays, we practice from 5 to 7. Thursday mornings, we practice from 6 to 7.30 in the morning. So we were able to run our normal Thursday schedule and stay on track, and it didn't change our routine. What I tried to do is we wanted to break that trip up. So we drove to Kansas City the first night. And I want to make sure anytime we're outside of Rapid City, if there's a culture experience we can get with our guys, we want to do that on the road. We took them to a place called Gates Barbecue on Friday afternoon. So it was unique to Kansas City at that time. Uh, that was awesome for our guys. And, and we were able to get into Joplin in, at an early time. We actually took them to a German restaurant out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we there was roads closed and trying to get there in Joplin, Missouri. But I think we gave our kids a, a couple cultural experiences that, that I think is just as important in the education, educational process as some of the football is. When you talk about fully funded, what do you mean by fully funded? Fully funded means they've got 36 full ride scholarships. There, that's the Division II maximum. Uh, they're fully funded with their coaching staff. I couldn't tell you exactly how many full time coaches they have, but that conference, in order to be a member, they have to be a fully funded group. And we'll see a couple fully funded programs come through here. Fort Hayes State's here in a couple weeks, and and also Nebraska Carney, who just joined the conference. So when we say fully funded, it's the resource from a scholarship allotment number one, and then the resources within the coaching staff and the support staff. 
What would you say the difference is between where we're at now, which is about 24 to 36? What's the difference? Uh, you know, the difference is depth and, and the ability to create, you know, a deeper roster. Uh, they, had, they had some very talented group on that end. And I think any time you increase your scholarship amount by double digits, there's the ability to create to possibly go get some different players where you can get spend a little bit more money, some difference makers, and then to be able to create uh, an overall depth in your roster. Other questions? All right, I'm a, real quick, this weekend we got Presentation College coming into town. Um, they'll be here to kind of finalize their M Day activities. Presentation College is in their second year. Uh, they're out of Aberdeen, uh, South Dakota. I know their head coach. We work at a camp up in Alaska together. He's done a tremendous job. He's he's done a great job assembling some talent in a short time. And they're a talented football team. Talent very, very – has some – playmakers on the offensive side and and some very skilled guys so they will be a tough opponent that rolls into town i know they've got some west river guys that are excited to come out here and play on this side of the state right now i want to bring up chris Sadi. chris Sadi is a junior running back for us from georgia uh, he's a mining engineering major and, and just like a handful of the other guys we've been fortunate enough to have up here during these luncheons he is a quality young man uh, a better person off the field but he's pretty dang good on the field so as we call him come on up sod dog Like Coach said, I'm Chris Saudi. I'm a junior running back, uh, mining engineer. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, originally. Uh, I grew up there. Um, I signed late on my senior year. Coming out here, I, would, I originally planned on going to West Point, um, but Coach Kratzer called me late, uh, came out here, uh, fell in love with the uh, Black Hills. Um, I was used to big buildings, a lot of people, and uh, this is kind of different and um, enjoyed the Dr. Wharton, he was a, a big part of me signing here as well. He uh, he made a point to um, come up and shake my hand and talk to my family. Um, but uh, I guess an interesting fact about myself would be that um, my junior year, or my freshman and junior year uh, played in the state championship at my high school. Um, my freshman year we tied, so we had to share uh, a state championship with them, and then my junior year we lost. Um, any questions? How do you tie a state champion? Uh, we there's no overtime. Uh, Georgia, there was a female soccer team that played, uh, and the it went into overtime, and the girls lost, and she ended up committed suicide uh, thereafter, and uh, so there was a like a decade where um, we weren't allowed to have overtime. My senior year, they changed it back to uh, <coughs> have an overtime because there was actually quite a bit of um, sharing of the state championships. So, yeah. You and <clears throat> Jamel uh, split time quite a bit, and yet you're both annually or regularly getting 80, 90 yards. Do you find that to be a positive thing since you're both getting 20, 25 carries a game? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I think we do. I think teams focus a little bit more on jaw, and that kind of opens um, the door up for me because um, jaw is obviously a outstanding athlete got great speed um but yeah i think it's i think it's good that we get to kind of split carries and um do well and perform well for this offense and this team when will you be doing your first internship and maybe going underground uh hopefully next summer um coal or uh still water mine out in montana um hopefully so looking forward to that if that if that can come through How have you Um, not frustrated <laughs> anymore. This offense, Coach Tinker has done an amazing job. Um, he's made it extremely simple for us. Um, I've never, even in high school, my offense was more complex and had to think. I mean, we joke about it all the time with running backs that we don't have to think. It's it's based around us. Um, and uh, like Coach was saying, it's uh, it's we're killing ourselves. Um, when you go back and watch the film, you know there was two or three times last week where we could have could have got points, um, and we but the turnovers we just we just have to eliminate that and uh, execute and not and not kill ourselves because we're moving the ball on on everybody. It's just we're slowing ourselves down. What's your uh, prognosis for this weekend? Um, 
I'm hoping to get another x-ray to make sure that uh, nothing's fractured in my hand. Um, I'm planning on student up today, just getting it taped, see how it goes, but uh, I'm planning on playing. And uh, what makes you, what makes you like uh, rapid season like that most of you? What, what do you like to do out here? Um, fishing. Uh, when I can get the time off, I love going up uh, in the creeks and going fly fishing, and um, that's one of the one things I really, really enjoyed on my recruiting trip, so. Uh, both. I really enjoy fly fishing uh, the most, but I do a little bit of both. Whatever's whatever's working. You got any of your fellow football players go with you? Uh, yeah, uh, Lucas uh, Van Lacken. We usually go up uh, and tear him up, or at least try to. Yes, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah.